welcome with me Pastor Tani Berenjai as today we are going to look at the position and attitude that you and I as a believer need to conquer and to walk in victory that the Lord Jesus Christ has obtained for us here in the earth and in 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8 we read it says be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour so firstly it says that your adversary is the devil our fight is not against flesh and blood we are not supposed to be uh, attacking one another and arguing with one another we are putting our weapons in even in a position where it is aimed at people and at institutions we need to understand that the adversary of humanity at large is satan it is the devil with every demonic dark force that he has available to himself so our fight or our war is not against one another your husband is not your enemy your children is not your enemy your boss is not your enemy everything that is contrary to god's word and that is against those things that you and i believe it is satan who hates god and who hates people so looking at an adversary, it is a rival, it is an opponent, it is an accuser, it is someone that will accuse you every day, it is an enemy. And even if he works through people, you and I have to have the discernment, we need to be wise and mature enough to know that we don't take things personally, we don't get offended because the enemy is trying to dislodge you from faith. And to get you to heal to your emotions and live through all those emotions and get you to live a life with no impact for the kingdom of God. So once again, 1 Peter 5 verse 8, he says, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil walks about. So this word here is connected, walks about. It's connected to seeking. It is not random. The devil didn't just stumble upon you and your family and thought, well, I don't have anything better to do today. No, this talks about stalking and seeking. There is an intent from hell. There is an intent from darkness. There is an intent from Satan against you. It's not not random it's not accidental you've got a target on your back because you are created in the image of the most high God because you carry the likeness from the father in the earth you have been marked intentionally there is a strategy there is a plan against your life so be sober be vigilant because the adversary uh, the devil your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion and now he says seeking whom he may devour now that word devour means to bring to absolutely nothing uh, to consume until there is nothing left and it is a, in a spiritual sense it means to destroy so that it be left and rendered useless another translation talks about ruin so that is the purpose of the enemy his purpose is intentionally and strategically to seek you out that he might devour your marriage devour your family devour were your finances and you know so often we think and we complain of being unhappy that is not the goal of the devil he doesn't care whether you are happy or unhappy he wants to take you out he wants to destroy the influence that you have in the earth because of God so we have to be moved from beyond um, I am unhappy and I am depressed and I am frustrated and we have to identify that this is an assault from an adversary whose, pur whose purpose is not our misery but whose purpose is a total annihilation. John 10 verse 10 says, and he makes it clear, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and destroy. He says, but I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Now for us to live this abundant life, a life of victory, it is a life of conquest. It is a life where you and I don't remain victims and we don't become survivors. We go beyond that. So not a victim, which is the lowest state of living or a survivor where you have overcome to a degree agree but truly a conqueror where which means no matter what has been said to you no matter what has happened no matter what has been done to you it didn't keep you there it didn't keep you down you didn't just land back on your feet but you are marching forward in triumph you are moving forward in the spirit and strength and conquest that Jesus himself demonstrated for us he died a most horrible death on the cross he went into a tomb but he didn't remain there we can 
saying that he was a victim. He was a victim of human rage, of human rebellion, of human hatred when he was on the cross. And then it looked like he was defeated when he was lying in the tomb. But we have to look uh, past all of that to the resurrection power of our Lord Jesus Christ who conquered death. And that will put you from whatever position of darkness and defeat to a place of conquest and victory. Braver, more courageous than ever, more determined than ever, more on fire than ever. Amen. Why? There are people that need to be saved. There are people that need to know the healing and the, con the uh, comforting power of our Lord Jesus Christ and our Savior. So we have this adversary, the devil, who is walking, seeking strategically, going about trying to steal and kill and destroy to devour you. And now the imagery here it uses is a symbol here of roaring lion. So we need to look at how to roar back. Why? Because Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. According to the book of Revelation, he is the lion of the tribe of Judah who conquered. And these are not equal opposing forces. The devil and Jesus are not equally matched. Jesus is infinitely more powerful. He is extremely higher and exalted and lifted up over all other things, even over all other things put together. Amen. So the Bible says when he walked in that place where Satan had dominion, that Jesus made a public spectacle as he triumphed over every dark and every evil force. Hallelujah. Our Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, our Christ is the King. He is the ultimate enthroned one. So as the king, as the lion of the tribe of Judah, you know what? We are also no part of that tribe. Why? We are heirs of Abram. We are co-heirs of the son. We are children of God that has been adopted into this tribe. We have been taken into the family. We are part of this community. And you know what happens? We can look at ourselves so many times as grasshoppers like the Israelites who, who didn't want to go in and spy on the promised land that God had for them. The inhabitants of Jericho look at them and they saw giants. But when the Israelites look at themselves, they saw grasshoppers. So that is the challenge before us that we will get a God perspective that we will understand who we are that we will roar back at the roaring lion that is standing in front of us amen so there are four attitude or postures that we need to be able to roar back and have influence within our lives in your marriage you can roar back at the devil who is trying to destroy you with your children financially in your ministry wherever you are whatever you are doing for God it is time to be braver it is time to roar back and set the enemy to flight. Amen. So let's look at the four postures. First of all, it says in 1 Peter 5 verse 8, be sober. And this has got to do that you and I need to be sober concerning your purpose, your identity, the nature of God and his power towards you in the earth right now. Because if you are not sober towards that, the enemy will deceive you. So be sober minded and not under the influence of what? Of social media, the news, the politics the, the, of the country, the voices of family and friends, the opinions of people, even of our own uh, emotions. We cannot allow ourselves to be influenced by anything other than what? Than the Spirit of God upon us. That we can roll back and see lions run from us as we are sober. Then be vigilant. You know, it says be sober, be vigilant. Vigilant is defined as a position or attitude where we are paying careful attention to the potential dangers that is setting against us. So we are watchful, we are aware. So we've got to be under the influence of the Spirit of God, be sober-minded. And then from that place of sober-mindedness, from that position, you need to watch, you need to look, you need to discern, you need to be fully aware and fully awake. And then from that position, our attitude, our posture, our attitude should be what? Submission. Yeah, we read how important this is in the Bible, that when we submit to God, the enemy will flee from, from us. In James 4 verse 7, it says, Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So you have uh, to be under authority and the authority of God, that you can walk in the authority of God. And the Bible says from that place of submission, now you can resist the devil and he will flee from you. And then lastly, it speaks about being connected. You know, it's amazing the animal kingdom, how the lioness 
comes together and roar when an enemy tribe comes and tries to rob them of their young and to kill and destroy their cubs. So a scientific study uh, was done and they saw that when two or three lionesses would roar together, an entire tribe of male lions with their lionesses would retreat at the roar of the lionesses. And therefore we read in Matthew 18 verse 24, where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. So therefore, let's just quickly sum up. We need to be sober-minded under the influence of the Holy Spirit. We need to be vigilant, not in denial or despair, but we need to know what's happening around us so that we may be instruments of change. And, you know, that uh, we may be the very victors that will walk in triumph over darkness. We need to be submitted to God, not arrogant, but truly having a humble spirit, walking in humility, resisting the devil. And then let's do it together because two are better than one. A three together is a force that cannot be overwhelmed. So today I want to read for us uh, from Psalm 57 verse 4. And it says, My soul is among lions. I lie among the sons of men who are set on fire, whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongues a sharp sword. So there is not just a threat from a distance. No, he says, I have been beset by lions. I've been surrounded by the enemy. So everywhere I look on every side, when I consider my finances, when I consider my family, when I consider my health, when I consider my mere existence, everything I turn, everywhere I look, he says, I am among, I am overwhelmed. I am surrounded by lions. Now remember lions here, the symbolism speaks of strength and power and courage. So it's not an enemy that is easily persuaded. And we have just learned now the posture that you and I need to take and uh, what he speaks about in the word of God to put this enemy to flight. But now there's also an action that you and I need to take. And so once we have the correct position, we need to take the correct action and it needs to flow from our hearts, our minds, our lips, our behavior, everything that we are. If we act according to the word of God, you and I cannot be defeated. So because we are operating in the power of the champions of champ or the champion of champions. So first of all, the first thing that you and I need to do is to not be afraid. It is a, an action that is followed or determined by a decision that you and I make. So when we determine according to the word of God that we will not be intimidated, we will not be fearful, we will not yield to doubt and discouragement that so easily grabs a hold of us when we look at the natural of that which surrounds us. And from that first act, uh, from that position of faith, we act now and we are not afraid. So Psalm 3 verse 6 says, I will not be afraid of 10,000 of people who have set themselves against me all around. And the key word he says, I will not. So it is a matter of choice. You may feel afraid and understand me well today. You may experience the emotions of fear and fearfulness, but you don't have to yield and give into that fear. You don't have to be afraid because you feel afraid because you have been born again and your being is determined by the blood of Jesus. In him you live and move and have your being. I will not be afraid though I feel afraid. I will not respond afraid. I will not live afraid. I will not speak afraid. I will not run i will not cringe i will not fade i will not give in hallelujah i have the right attitude and now i can follow with the right action so why do i not have to be afraid psalm 3 verse 3 says but you are lord are a shield for me so between me and ten thousands of lions between me and the darkness of the devil himself between me and every power of the enemy that is set against me is the shield of god it is impenetrable it's unbreakable it's unassailable and that very shield about me in his name is jesus christ amen and it continues, it says, my glory and the one who lifts my head. Why? When I look at 10,000 of enemies, my natural response is to bow in defeat. But God comes and reminds me there is a shield between me and them. And that he lifts my head to look to the enemy and to look him in the eye and say, I will not be afraid. 
So the second action to do is what? It is to renew your mind to the fact that Jesus has done this before and he conquered. Jesus Christ, the great conqueror who endured not just tens of thousands, but who endured every single force of darkness put together. Every demon, every principality, every sickness, every sorrow, every trauma, every tragedy, every sinful thing came upon him at once. And he conquered. And you know what? No matter what comes against you, you don't have to be afraid. You have to continually renew your mind where it would want to go down that path of faithful thinking. And renew your mind and remind uh, yourself that uh, the conquest of Jesus Christ where he defeated the enemy through the blood of Jesus Christ. Psalm 22 verse 12 to 13 it's a prophetic psalm of Jesus. And it says, Many bulls have surrounded me. They gape at me with their mouths like a raging and roaring lion. Jesus experienced being surrounded by raging lions who were ready to tear him to pieces. But that was not how the story ends. Though they came, they were defeated. Though they roared, they were brought to nothing through the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. So remind yourself continually, meditate on this continually. Jesus did it. And if Jesus who did it lives on the inside of me, then I can do this as well. Psalm 22 verse 21 says, Save me from the lion's mouth and from the horns of the wild oxen. And then he paused and then he says, You have answered me. So we cannot be brave by ourselves even if we try but if we act in accordance to the word of god we will live lives of bravery point number three is be reminded of the delivering power of god for you so you don't have to be afraid you are positioning yourself in bravery you remind yourself uh, you know that God has conquered and it is so important that we take that victory and we personalize it that it is indeed through you and in you and also through you that God wants to deliver the human race right now. So the conquest of Christ needs to be personalized. And now you need to act on that delivering power by God of God by doing what? By walking as a deliverer, by speaking as a deliverer, saying through me, God will deliver. Through me, God will heal. Through me, God will lose change. Through me, God will position the kingdom of light in the community where he has placed me. And we see it in Daniel 6. You know, he was thrown in the lion's den and the king came and he, he, he said to Daniel, your God, whom you serve continually, he will deliver you. You know, isn't it amazing, an unbelieving king that had faith in the God of Daniel to deliver Daniel? Verse 22, he says, my God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth so that they have not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. And also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. If God did it for Daniel, he will do it for you. Jesus shows us a way. He modeled for us how to overcome many lines that set against us. And we see that through the word of God, he was faithful to deliver his servants from the mouth of the lions. Verse 23 says, Now the king was exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no injury whatever was found on him because he believed in his God. We are going to determine to not be afraid. And we are going to personalize the delivering power of God and say, Father, deliver me. Deliver through me in Jesus' name. And as we go about our every ordinary day lives, we are looking for opportunities for the delivering power of God to work through us. Amen. So number four and lastly, 1 Peter 3 verse 9 in the Passion Translation says, Take a decisive stand against. So you can't be on the fence. You can't be neutral. You have to take a position. Are you going to be fearful or are you going to be faithful? Are you going to be weak or are you going to be strong? Are you going to be afraid or are you going to be courageous? You need to take a decisive stance. In other words, we are not trying to maintain what we have, but we are going to stand against. We are going to move forward forward that the kingdom of God will be established and it is time that you and I take back that territory that has been stolen from us. Amen. And for us to be able to defeat the lies that surrounds us, we determine not to be afraid. To think about the conquest of Christ. We personalize the delivering power of God and we take a decisive stand against. Hebrews 11 verse 33 in the Passion Translation, speaking about believers, he says, It was faith that shut the mouth of lions. 
And now how did it shut the lion's mouth? Well, in 1 Peter 3 verse 9, we read, Take a decisive stand against him and resist the every attack with strong, vigorous faith. Listen to God's response. We have to take a decisive stand. When we are resisting, it is an action. Unafraid, considering Christ, personalizing the deliverance power, and then what? Going into motion with the resistance against strong and vigorous faith resisting the attack of the enemy then the bible says that you will see the personal and powerful restoration of god within your lives amen so when my soul is among lions i will not be afraid when my soul is among lions i will remember that christ defeated every lion when my soul is among lions i will receive the delivering power of god to say to a place of defeat of that which is against me through me in the name of Jesus. And I will take a position of resistance. I will take a position of vigorous faith against, you know, and I will push back. I will roll back in Jesus' name. And as we do that, Jesus said, the enemy will be defeated. Hallelujah. So I want to pray for you today. If you have been afraid, if you have forgotten the victory of Christ, if you are not walking in the power of God and has been succumbed by the power of the enemy, if you, you know, haven't resisted but you have yielded to all of the darkness, do not be condemned today. Do not be discouraged today because Jesus is right here to deliver you. Just where you are, you know, I'm going to pray for you. We have heard the word. It has brought faith to our hearts. Now we need to apply it. We need to receive it. And we need to allow the Holy Spirit to come and transform us from the inside out. And I want to speak a prophetic word. It is scripture that I'm going to speak over you. So just receive it by faith in Jesus' name. Father, I pray now for every hearer. Let this be a prophetic utterance that you will fulfill. Let not the word, uh, your word, return to your void, but let it go to motion and act on it, Father. And make it so, is our prayer in Jesus' name. And I speak to this family, uh, we speak to this congregation, and we declare that our hearts are steadfast. Our hearts will remain steadfast, and our confidence will not be shaking. It is fixed in you. I pray that though we are surrounded by 10,000s of people and we, who set themselves against us on every side, all around, we will remember that you are a shield about us, impenetrable, infallible. You are our glory and the lifter of our head. I pray that now revelation may come through the Spirit of God, of the unfailing love that you have for us, of your mighty work of power and work towards us. The power that raised Jesus from the dead is working for us and will work through us. And I pray, dear Lord, that you as our deliverer will go into motion on behalf of us and that we will see a great deliverance. And right there, where you are right now, identify the lines, identify the problems. And you know, uh, I want you to just think a little bit of that darkness. And I want you to see in that darkness how God steps in. I want you to see how it divinely shuts the mouth of the lions and now we're going to roar back we're going to roll back in the name of jesus and see them flee and thank you father for every individual in their unique situations that the holy spirit is working that the holy spirit is working moving and speaking in jesus name and that we will have a testimony upon testimony of what you have done we roar back at the enemy and though we are surrounded and our souls are among lions we will see them go in jesus name because of you and we thank you today for a complete work that you are doing in families lives a complete work that you are doing in every individual life uh, that is praying this prayer today with me and we thank you for that in jesus mighty name amen and amen now I want to encourage you in this holiday season, especially take up this attitude, these four attitudes or positions and um, start doing these four actions that even through this holiday season, wherever you find yourself, that you will always live in that victory which Christ has attained for you. God bless you.